Hello folks, this is John Kogan, the CEO of Performative, the online community for corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. I would like to welcome everyone to today's technology webinar series webinar on cloud-based consolidation and reporting. One of those nagging problems that never seems to get any easier is the consolidation and close process. Fortunately, there are solutions available that can help finance organizations not only close more efficiently, but more accurately as well. This webinar will showcase host analytics, cloud-based close and disclose application. It will highlight how pre-built financial and accounting intelligence in the cloud can reduce the time to close and allow for more analysis and fact-based decisions. With host analytics application, companies can improve internal controls for producing financial statements, consolidate across multiple entities, ERPs, and currencies, and seamlessly provide disclosure management, budgeting, and forecasting capabilities. A few items before we get started. Uh, certainly thanks to Host Analytics for sponsoring today's event. I'm looking forward to great information and a wonderful demo. Um, and so uh, we can all get a look at how we might be able to learn from and utilize a platform like this in our companies. Next up, a quick welcome to Performative. Uh, for those who are new to Performative, we're the largest and fastest growing online community and resource for senior level corporate finance, treasury, accounting, and related professionals. Um, we welcome you to Performative. There are certainly many conversations, peer-to-peer -peer conversations that go on on Performative uh, every day, um, thousands of them to be exact, and um, uh, topics like the one that we'll be covering today's webinar are covered, so if you'd like to learn more, please join us at Performative.com. A few notes on today's event. Number one, a link to today's presentation and a recording of this webinar will be sent out to all attendees. Uh, within, uh, and actually, it's a link to the recording, not the whole recording file, will be sent out to all attendees within 24 hours of this event. Uh, the presentation itself, which is relatively brief because most of today is a demo, but that presentation is already uh, uploaded at performative.com slash resources. So if you do want to print that out, follow along, feel free to do so. Uh, just a quick reminder, there's no CPE for uh, today's webinar. It's a tech demo webinar. Uh, please do ask questions. Um, we have a wonderful expert on the phone with us today who I'll be introducing momentarily. And um, this is a great time to ask any questions about uh, this application, certainly the host app, uh, analytics application we'll be seeing a demo of, but also um, you know, what companies are doing uh, when they're looking at applications like this, how they're implementing, uh, what the results have been, things to do, things to avoid, et cetera. Fantastic time to get those questions out. Um, so if you take one moment to look at your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see there's a section there entitled Questions. And you simply drop that question in at any time uh, from now towards the end of the event. And the Q&A segment will come after the presentation and demo. We'll do our best to get to all of your questions today. Finally, after today's uh, event, you'll be asked to take a short survey, literally 60 seconds. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback uh, about today's event. It helps us do better the next time. Also, if you would like to be connected uh, with either the speaker or uh, the sponsor today, Host Analytics, uh, that's a click of a button away. And that button happens to be in that short survey. So if you'd like to be connected, just indicate so on the survey. We're more than happy to make that connection. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Mike Lease. Mike is a senior solution consultant at Host Analytics and a senior finance professional with over 20 years of experience in software, manufacturing, distribution, utilities, and professional services. Mike has expertise in financial reporting, financial planning, information systems, and more. And he's here today to tell us more about uh, the host analytics platform and how companies are successfully utilizing that platform. So Mike, welcome. Thank you, John. And thank you to everyone that's attending today's uh, session for cloud-based consolidations and reporting. Uh, so with that said, uh, just again, John introduced myself. So I come from the world of working in the Office of Finance. I did it for a little over 20 years until I moved over to the other side of trying to help organizations like yourself uh, become more efficient, essentially. Um, so with that said, let's. I was going to start out with a couple different slides, uh, tell you all the cloud and the benefits associated with that, and then we'll walk ourselves into a product demonstration of what Host Analytics has to offer, and we'll wrap it up at the end uh, for some question and answers. Okay? With that said, let's go ahead and get started. There we go. 
getting ahead of myself. There we go. What I usually like to start out with is talk about what the cloud is not. Okay, so let's start off. You know, I come from the world of an on-premise solution. So when I first heard about um, you know, cloud solutions or SaaS software as a service, as it's known, um, I was a bit skeptical at first. But if you think about all the different companies that are out there already on the cloud, something like uh, an ADP or a Salesforce.com, or if you do your banking online, you're doing everything already in the cloud. So the infrastructure that's already out there that versus an on-premise versus uh, a SaaS-based solution, uh, you can see the cost benefits associated with that. You know, from an on-premise solution, you're installing all the hardware, all the software. As security updates come out through your uh, the current vendors or the solutions that you are currently using, uh, that takes time, that takes effort, it takes money. And it's very complex, very complicated, long. Uh, I, if I go back to my days of when I used to do this, uh, yeah, I did a lot on-premise solutions, apply the different security patches, and then have to go to each and every one's machine to apply those patches. Very time consuming. But again, I worked in finance, so I understand that most organizations run very lean and mean. So I wore more than one hat at any given time. Okay? So let's talk about what the cloud is. So as you can very clearly see, you know, uh, the cloud is, you know, it's basically where everything you do today is stored behind the scenes. We do it up in the cloud. If it's your infrastructure, the hardware, the software, we do it all for you. So the only thing that you really have to do is if you have access to the Internet, sign in anywhere, anytime based on your security rights to access that application. It's as simple as that. It's 24-7 shopping. There we go. And as I mentioned before, you know, a number of companies that are already that have already been established in the cloud for probably a little over 10 years, something as ADP, they do the majority of the payroll for most organizations throughout the world today. They've been in the cloud for roughly the last 10 years. Or if it's Salesforce formation, you know, Salesforce has uh, most of those organizations accessing their database via the cloud today, as well as a handful of other uh, ERP systems that are out there handling something as uh, simple as your general ledger, NetSuite today. And as a host analytics, uh, that's one of the products that we use because it is cloud-based. There we go. So when we talk about the cloud, one of the myths or mistakes, mistakes about it is that you know, some people believe it's not safe, it's not secure. It's totally opposite. We go above and beyond what's required uh, from a compliance standpoint. You know, we, this is our life, this is our lifeblood, this is our, our business. We need to make sure that your data is totally secure 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that you have access to get to that information at any point in time from anywhere in the world. So, yes, we comply with all the comp uh, compliance standards that are out there today, so we make sure that your information is safe and secure. So when you leave the office, you you know full, full well that every piece of information is out there that is fully protected by us. So what I like to show you now is, you know, this is the basics of, you know, what the cloud is going forward. So what does the host analytics cloud technology mean to me as a finance professional? So everything that's associated below, I like to refer to it as that rainbow, uh, you know, this is everything that's done behind the scenes. This is a complete enterprise performance management system, also known as EPM, and it exceeds you know, my needs around planning, forecasting, close and disclose, as well as the reporting aspect of this. And when people talk about the data integration, it comes from any data source, so regardless of where your data resides, whether it's in an Excel spreadsheet, an ERP system, a legacy system, disparate systems all across the world, we can connect to it whether it's uh, manual, automatic, okay? And it also means I don't have to worry about any of the stuff that's under this rainbow. You know, all the infrastructure, as we discussed prior, you know, any of the hardware, the software, that's all done behind the scenes. All you need to do is learn how to connect to the Internet, and we do that on a daily basis. So I'm always on my most recent version of the software. Any patches, any functionality updates, we do that all behind the scenes, okay? 
So never, you'll never again have to budget for a system upgrade, and you can take full advantage of any of the new features and functionality immediately. There's no reason to wait. So with an on-premise software, customers get abandoned on you know, past versions. They're forced to upgrade to get new functionality. The upgrades can cost as much as the initial implementation of the software. And you may have to do multiple upgrades to catch up. So I used to use Hyperion Enterprise. You know, I was on version 1.82 at one point, and I go from you know 1.82 to the latest and greatest version, release after release. It was no, I, I couldn't jump from one to the next. So since last year, we've delivered the new products, the usability and performance improvement, as well as over 200 feature enhancements. And a lot of these feature enhancements come from our cu existing customers today. So let's just proceed to go a little further here. There we go. So from an application standpoint, the only things that you need to worry yourself about is you know, from an input template standpoint, whether you're doing your budgets or your forecast, we provide the tool or the interface for your users to enter information from a budgeting or forecasting standpoint. But then we can also do some of the modeling. And eventually, everybody needs to do the reports. You don't have to do it all down in Excel. You do all the reports inside of the host analytics application. It's one-stop shopping, and that's the beauty of what I really, truly like uh, versus where I came from. On-premise solutions, you're buying stacks and stacks of different applications, and it's your job to put them all together, but you have information that resides in multiple systems. So that one question you always have to ask yourself from a consolidation standpoint, we're talking about one version of the truth. But with host analytics, you can achieve efficiency and effectiveness, and at the same time, guarantee that the information is one version of the truth. So with that said, let's go ahead and get the uh, demonstration portion of today's presentation started. Okay. We can see your screen there, Michael. So, so when you first sign into the application, um, you can just so I can set the real estate or at least orient yourself. What you're seeing here is I'm signed in as myself. Uh, and across the top of the screen is what we refer to as our uh, different ways to interact within the one application. One single sign-on, signed on based on your security rights via the web. Okay. So what we're looking at here is we have the ability to do budgeting, forecasting, top-down model, bottoms-up approach, however you'd like to do it, or a combination thereof. We're not going to focus uh, today's uh, demonstration on budget, but we're going to focus more, more on the consolidations, the reports, and where we currently reside in our scorecard. And this maintenance window is mostly used for you know, the administrative, uh, typically one or two administrators in your organization today. Um, so we're going to focus our attention more on the scorecard. Some people refer to this more as your dashboard. So when I started my job on a daily basis, you know, I wanted to understand what were the key metrics that were driving my business or where the consolidation stood in terms of its completion process. So this is our dashboard. Uh, and as uh, some people like to say, you know, even at Host Analytics and our CFO, Kelly Bennels, she uses this on a daily basis to understand not only where she sits at the top of the house from a consolidated standpoint, but she wants to understand all the different drivers from a departmental standpoint to understand What's driving the business? Where are, we, where are we at and where do I have to pay a little bit more attention to understand to drive that business a little bit better? So everybody likes a little picture. Everybody likes uh, you know, a quick understanding of where dynamically we sit in terms of its completion. Now, the each users can des design this however they see fit. So I like to look, maybe look at you know, where the bulk of my expenses from an operating expense standpoint. Maybe I want to look at it not only from one scenario, from an actual standpoint, but I want to look at it as a monthly trend, but I want to compare it maybe to uh, a budget or a forecast or even my prior year history. So we can bring in the historical actuals if when you start your consolidation process, you're starting it from this point forward, you can easily load up the historical information for reporting purposes. Okay? And then you can put traffic lighting associated with it as well. But these are just, you know, they're just not simple, pretty pictures. You can interact with these tools as well. So if I wanted to interact, I simply just click on that link, and it takes me to behind the scenes, okay? So I can look at it in a graphical format. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trained accountant, so sometimes a picture doesn't tell a story. I might just want to look at it 
I want to, I want to see the numbers, the cold hard numbers. I'm a numbers type of guy, all right? But there are some people that look, like to look at it both ways. But you have the ability to drill into it. You can attach linked reports to it. So even if you're not in the system, if you're just more of a, a read-only person at this point, you, know, you can drill down to that lowest level. You can run the report. And then you can start drilling into it to get down to that lowest level of detail that you need to see. Okay? But the nice one thing here is that you can actually drill into any specific report and see the transactional detail that makes it up. This is the beauty part, because within Host Analytics, we don't charge you for the data. We don't charge you to store the data. You can keep as much or as little information inside of Host Analytics as possible. We don't charge you for that. So let's just go back to our desktop or our dashboard at this point. But it's just one effective way that you can drill down to that lowest level of detail, one-stop shopping. One picture tells a whole story. But you know, if you wanted to create another dashboard, and you can have as many folders or tabs as you'd like. So some of the consolidation metrics that I like to follow, or something like you know, as easy as net cash activity, or maybe I wanted to track my CTA, a CTA is adjustment-wise on a trend basis, or if I wanted to look at my intercompany elimination variance. Uh, variances. Or simple fact, I want to understand where the process stands. Everybody wants to know how I can close my books even faster than I'm doing it today. When I first started out in accounting, it took anywhere from you know, 15 to 20 days, three weeks, to close your books. That information is three weeks old by the time I was done. And then you're ready for the next month. You know, Information is key to make decisions because it's a changing world, it's a changing environment. So you need first-hand information that's more real-time, okay? But again, we can just track different metrics however you see fit. You can bring information that's not in the system and load it up into uh, account-like structure. So with that said, let's go ahead, head over. But before we talk about the consolidation, I just wanted to show you the brains behind the application. So we'll go to my maintenance window and look at my segment hierarchies. This is where you establish the rules, you know, understanding what makes up a company structure. And across the top, you'll see the different dimensions that you have uh, access to. So everybody has companies, and everybody would have accounts. And the di different dimensions in which you want to look and slice and dice that information eventually is designed in these different dimensions. So if we're looking within company, these are tree-like structures. And a lot of this information can be loaded directly from your uh, ERP systems automatically. And if we just keep drilling down into those tree-like structures, you'll notice is something is some similar as the elimination company, you know, the, the elimination that needs to take place within those common parent roll-ups. If it doesn't take place at this level, it has the brains or the intelligence to take place at the next level. So if I click on one of these entities, you'll notice the existing member associated with each. You know, how does this individual uh, entity roll up? Well, I can easily either add it, subtract it, multiply it, divide it, or just not just have it stand by itself without having it roll up and whether it's an elimination company. And we handle multiple, multiple, multiple currency situations very easily. So you can assign the different currency associated with each of these individuals uh, during the setup period, but then you can also provide or apply the interim currencies, you know, whether it's the average rate, end of the month, uh, or any historical information. And we can directly feed this information either from you know, Morningstar or some external app, uh, resource. Because I know I used to have to go out to these different websites and track down what the currency rates were for the different rates that I was tracking, whether it was average, end of the month, or maybe some historical rates that going forward. And then you can have different types of roll-ups. So everybody looks from a consolidation standpoint. Everybody has alternate ways to look at the data, whether it's from a management structure, like you may look at it here, or from a legal structure, or if maybe you're owned by somebody else and you need to produce the same re those same results that you just managed your book by, but maybe in a different fashion. And it, to do that all in Excel, you're recreating the wheel. But not within host, you can easily define different attributes, you know, different ways to roll this up, whether it's tax roll up within the US or by country, whether it's local or reporting gap. Okay? So then if maybe we scroll over here and we'll look at the account structure. Again, you can have alternate account roll ups, as many as you'd like 
or you can assign different attribute rollups to each product group. So you can see in the account main, we may be looking at something as simple as an income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, but it also can store not only financial information, but non-financial, that statistical type information that's stored maybe somewhere in your sub-ledger systems. But you want to be able to tick and tie the information that resides in your financial statements to the information that resides in your sub-ledger systems. And I had to do this when I worked for a lot of different publicly traded corporations. You had to tick and tie the information, and you had to have the different support that provided detailed information that made up each one of these numbers. For those footnotes when you're reporting to the SEC for either your, your K's or your Q's. Okay? And you can perform different calculations inside of host analytics as well. So if we just keep expanding the tree-like structure, make it very intuitive. Wherever you see a plus, you expand. Wherever you see the minus, it'll collapse. So if we click on gross sales, you can see that the existing member and how it rolls up. It's that function, it's that business intelligence that's already built into the tool. So there's no programming necessary on your end of, on your side of this, uh, the table. Okay? So within the different account groups, you can assign whether it's income account, asset, expense, liability, statistical equity. Okay? Debit or credit, the different types of flows, whether it's a flow or a balance, and the different currency types that we established, whether they were average end of the month. You can create as many different rate uh, buckets as you need to. Uh, and whether it's you know month to date or year to date, okay, and then a lot of this reporting information comes into play when we actually do that reporting uh, analysis. And some of the other buckets uh, that we'll talk about is something as simple as reporting. This tracks the different movements of the data flows within your consolidation process. So we have a common currency consolidation, and I'll just expand this, as well as the local currency. So this e when your ERP system uh, when we extract the data from any of your legacy systems, ERP systems, even something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, it would get loaded into the, whether you're reporting in common currency or local currency, that base information gets loaded into your general ledger data. And then we start going through any of the adjustment and journal entries, which I'll show you shortly when we get into the consolidation uh, part of the application. Okay, But you can literally see that we can track all the movement. So if you decided to do your consolidation outside of your ERP system because you have a multitude of ledgers that need to now come together. So in my prior history, I worked for a distribution company. We had 50 remote sites. Each one acquired via acquisition had their own general ledger. So I needed one consistent chart of accounts or at least one system to bring all that information together. Excel was not going to cut it. So I needed some sort of enterprise-wide application that gave me the ability to do consolidations, reporting, and maybe some dashboarding off of that type of information. So with an implement, so to implement a product like this from a time standpoint, you could be up and running in as little as four weeks, depending on the complexity of your organization. Uh, an example, one of our customers is Groupon. They were up and running in less than a month, and they had over 700 different reporting sites. So it can be done. Okay. So with that said, let's go overhead and maybe look at a report before we get into the consolidation aspect of this. So the reporting is always key to this. A lot of what you do today is always in Excel because it looks pretty. It's easy to bring a lot of information together, but it's not meant to be a database. So within the reports, we have my file cabinet, okay? And you can design this however you see fit, okay? And then we can also have your favorites. So within all those reports that have been created by your groups, multiple groups, multiple people within the organization. You can even have your, you know, your go-to report. So in here I have my favorites folder. If I click on the consolidations folder that I've created, I have a standard report that I like to run. So basic one is my consolidations review. If I double click on that, you can see how quickly it loads the report, but you're doing all this inside of the host analytics application. So when we talked about the, the ability to do reporting, and in this particular case, I'm looking at the first quarter of 2013. I'm looking at all the different flows of how that information was entered into my system. The GL data came directly from my ERP systems, you know, my general ledger. The eliminations are taking place inside of host. Uh, and then that conversion, from, if I'm re reporting in local currency and I needed to convert it based on the exchange rates, that calculation is already being done inside the application as well once I ran the consolidation process. 
to get me to a total consolidated common currency close. But I can look at it in common currency, but I can also look at it at the cons local currency level as well. And then you have your simple chart of accounts. If you click on those plus signs, it keeps expanding to get down to the lowest level of details that you need to then look at. Okay? And again, any of these reports can be uh, exported out to Excel. You can PDF it, you can print it, and you can even email to whoever needs to review it if they don't have access to the system. Okay? And then you can also save this report as a snapshot, as something to compare, maybe as this is where we were day one compared to where I need to be day two. Okay? And just to quickly, if we expand this triangle up here in the left-hand corner, you'll notice that all the different dimensions. So across the page, to write a report like this, across my page, I said, well, what do I want to look at? I want to look at my actual dimension for the organization decision works for this specific time period. And down the rows, I have whatever chart of accounts I've selected in this particular case, and the reporting dimension. Did I want to look at it in common currency or local currency? And at any point in time, you can move these different dimensions around, or you can add additional dimensions to the, uh, to the report as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and work in the consolidation. So at this point in time, you've loaded up your actual results into Host Analytics. Okay? And you can see going across the top, we have the multiple the scenarios. So within here, we're playing with an actuals. But if you wanted to do your budget consolidation or a forecast consolidation, the ability to do those multiple eliminations, you would run a consolidation process for your budgets or your forecast. But for now, we're going to concentrate on our actual results. And maybe we'll look at the different time periods. So if I didn't want to maybe have some adjusting entries, I still needed to close for December 2012. Simply just change the time period. And then the companies or the consolidated companies at the top. So if you click on the hourglass, or the magnifying glass, I should say, this is my tree-like structure. And these are the entities that I am uh, responsible for, or at least I have access to. Now, you can define the security to these individual items uh, in the consolidation setup as well as the security. And I'll show you that in a second. So within the consolidation setup, if I click that, you can set, you know, set certain where, where, what account do I want to retain the earnings to roll to, what's my balancing account for anything that's out of balance, uh, and then the ability to calculate CTA either from the balance sheet or the P&L. Okay? And in the end, I need to know that my balance sheet takes some time. And then from a security standpoint, you can run this either from a uh, centralized or decentralized. So if I pick a user and I pick myself, you can see all the processes that I have access or responsible to do from a consolidation standpoint, whether it's inputting journal entries, whether it's a standard recurring dynamic, uh, the ability to do partial ownership, that minority interest calculations, uh, that so many of us love so much to do. Uh, the ability for reclassifications, obviously eliminations. Uh, if you needed to load uh, additional, um, I like to refer to, you know, from an actual data load standpoint, tracking, uh, supporting documentation. The ability to load that sub-ledger information from multiple uh, reporting aspects of the business. And the, then the ability to do the validations and your consolidation process. But at any point in time, you can run either a decentralized or centralized process. So you could start out centralized and over time push it out to each one of your uh, subs or business units. Okay? But again, the consolidation is a process. You know, I always like to refer to it as the budget as the art and the, uh, the consolidation as more of the science. We all know it needs to tick and tie. There's certain reporting requirements based uh, different information that is out there. So if we click on the standard journals, you can see I already have something posted. So if we wanted to just quickly look to see what one of these entries are, looks like, just double click on it. Okay. So essentially you would create a name for it, whether you wanted to post it month to date or year to date. Uh, the reporting aspect, whether you report it in common currency or local currency. But if you needed this entry to maybe one time have it auto-reversing, so if you book it in your consolidation process outside of your ERP system but later wanted to map it back uh, to have the two systems ticked and tied, you can do that at a later date. Now, obviously, just to create a simple journal entry, 
you know, give it a description, whatever the company needs to be, what the department is, the different dimensions, what the accounting structure is like. Simply by double clicking, you can pick and choose which uh, element it needs to be, and the products. And the rest of these can be set to default. And then the ability to either debit or credit and based on the dollar amount. Now, obviously, to post any of these journal entries, they need to be in balance or it will not save. Okay? But again, that's uh, a standard journal entry. So these are one-time entries that you'd make on any given month just to correct certain uh, items within your consolidations. But at the same time, we put a workflow process around this. So you'll see these indicator lights going down the left-hand side. So that means at this point in the process, my workflow for my consolidation is still a work in progress. But you can have as many people in the process that you need to be, but put the workflow process around. Okay? So then you can record any of your recurring journal entries. It has that intelligence to do the same aspects that you're doing it today, but more in a controlled environment, understanding who all the players are and the process that they need to finish that overall consolidation. Uh, and in some cases, you can create some dynamic journal entries. Uh, so these are the ability to calculate certain aspects. So if you know that sales uh, or revenue needs to be, from a royalty perspective, needs to three, be 3%, three you don't have to wait until that consolidation is done. Every time you do the process, the system would recalculate and book that entry for maybe your taxes, maybe those royalty fees that are based on another driver inside of the uh, account structure, and then the different entry or actions associated uh, with that process, whether you needed to post it, whether you needed to clear that data. It's a whole process that you need to keep fully in line. Uh, and then the ability to do any of those partnership, uh, partial ownership roles, the ability for minority interest, the system handles that quite well. Uh, one of the questions we always get asked is, can you go from uh, GAAP to IFRS? Most definitely. The system handles that way and it's, uh, you know, as the, how do I say this, the accounting world changes, uh, our, our application needs to change with it, but we handle any uh, reporting requirements that you need to do today is handled inside of Host Analytics and has that intelligence, that business savviness, so where you can get out of that Excel environment uh, where, you limp, where you lose all control, and, but within Host Analytics, you, the, the main goal here that I'm trying to drive or strive to is get to that single version of the truth, one set of data, not multiple book nuts multiple uh, types of uh, data points for revenue. Okay, I want the same number consistently used all across the organization. So then we get down to that elimination process, that next step. So within here, if we double click on the intercompany do to's, do from's, whether it's sales or cost of goods sold, you simply set up some of the rules. So for intercompany do to, do from's, I want that added balance to post to a suspense account in this particular case. But the prior setup to that is, you know, what are those accounts that I need to? So for intercompany AR, it's a do from, and the AP intercompany would be a do to, okay? Based on those that account structure, pick from the list. Then you can also add variance threshold to the process as well. So we all know that when you do that intercompany elimination process, there's a, there's a variance that you're comfortable with, and there's a variance that you're not comfortable with. Now, obviously, in a perfect world, it should be zero. Uh, but you would set the different thresholds, you know, zero to a thousand. It's good for me. Anything that's between a thousand and five thousand, I might need further investigation. But anything that's greater than five thousand, it's not acceptable. Again, put some rules around the process, and everything then becomes much more efficient and effective. And you then spend more time doing the analysis of the business as opposed to cleansing that information. But then we can run some variance reports off of that. So if we these are some standard reports that are already pre-built within the application. So in this particular case, I want to run it for the month of December. I want to run it for the intercompany due to. Then I want to pick the two different accounts or the, all the accounts associated with that. Go ahead and click Save and then click Go. In a, in a second or two, it'll start re generating a report for us to look at, which then you could either download into Excel or email or save it as a copy back in the system as a, as a benchmark of where you were in that process. Again, the thresholds of understanding what makes up these balances. And then you can double click into each one of the segments to understand what the transactional history of what makes up that out of balance. Okay. 
And then the last couple steps here is, you know, the different validations that are stored within your process. You know, you can create as many different rules that you need to know that certain pieces of information need to be ticked in time. Uh, obviously, the most common one is make sure I was not out of balance. If I was out of balance, what's driving that? So there's different reports, there's different mechanisms along the process. And the last step here is that consolidation process. Now, if we just kick this off, I'll go ahead and we'll say process. Okay, it brings up, you know, what do I want to run, what do I want to run that actual process for, the time period, uh, what period do I want to run to and from, and then we'll basically just kick it off. But we can run a lot of this behind the scenes, so we don't have to wait for it to be done. It'll actually prompt us when it's done uh, and notify us at any point in the, in the system. So we can still go ahead uh, within the process, and it'll alert us when it's done. So in this case, maybe I wanted to look at uh, you know, a consolidation status report. Now this is really nice. It determines, you know, where from a workflow standpoint, where it sits in terms of its completion. So this is some of the functionality that we've created that a lot of what I used to do here is keep this in a in an Excel spreadsheet. And people will either email me the results and they tell me, you know, I've ticked and tied it, I'm done, I've completed my section of it. So you can have this report handy at any point in time to understand what that process is and where it stands. Because once again, you know, consolidation is a science, but you know, once you, once you have people that are part of the process, those are the individuals that are either keeping the process from being completed or not. So in this particular case, if you hover over, it'll tell you, where, you know, what needs to be required or what I was successful, you know, with the data load, the standard journals, do I need to lock the data at this point in time, and where I stand in terms of the validation. So let's go ahead and close that. And now maybe let's start and we'll do some additional reporting. So we've done the consolidation and now we need to compare, you know, actual versus budget at some point in time. So let's go back, we'll look at our different reports. Maybe we'll look in the consolidations bucket, that's my favorite. Um, so now it's told me that my consolidation has now been completed successfully. If I wanted to see the link to understand what the process was and all the different functionality that it went through, you know, it executed the validation checks, so forth and so on. And it's processing all of this behind the scenes. So this is not any proprietary language that you have to write. This comes with the applications, already preset, pre predefined. There's no scripting necessary from your standpoint. So I'll just close that. So in the next five to ten minutes, we'll just quickly talk about some of the reporting aspect of this and the different reports that you can run or the different reports that you can produce on a monthly basis. So you don't have to recreate the wheel every time. So maybe we wanted to look at a consolidated income statement. Let's just double click on that. There we go. So these are already pre-formatted pre reports that you've already designed within the system. Wherever it's a plus, obviously we can drill down to get a little bit more detailed information if we need to. If I wanted to understand, you know, what made up travel and entertainment, I can simply keep drilling down until I get to that lowest level of detail. Okay. But if I wanted to look at, you know, other reports that are within my favorites that I like, uh, maybe I want to look at income statement for the consolidated columns. I want to look at all the companies across my entire organization in one full shot. Now it'll load this report. So here you can see I can see all of my entities going across the top with my account structure going down the side for the period ending 2012. And if I unhide that different dimension, these are all the dimensions that you have associated with this different report. But if you wanted to use standard uh, report sets all throughout your organization to verify that gross margin is consistently calculated the same way, you can create different report sets in which we have here. So within the rows or the accounts, like you can see income statement base, and the consolidated companies, these came from my different report sets. So if I expand the accounts, you can see these are some of the sets that I've created that I want to use consistently all throughout the organization to make sure that when I get into review time, into my board meetings or my management review sessions with the auditors, I want to verify that everybody's looking at the same information consistently all the time. Okay? But it's very easy to create your own report on the fly. So if I go up here and if I want to just quickly create that same income statement consolidated. I'll go to my dynamic reports, and I'm going to play in my financial area. Okay, so 
So instead of using the dimensions, I'll use some of the report sets that have already been predefined. So in the accounts, I simply just want to drag over my income statement base to my row. And as one of the measures, maybe I want to look at you know, actual versus budget, month to date. Two, three clicks, you've just created your own systematic report on the fly. Most of it pre-formatted, and you can put in some conditional formatting as well. But if you add, wanted to maybe add some insert formulas on the fly, maybe I wanted to put in uh, you know, a comment section to this specific report, and simply just column. I want to put it to, to the right of column. We'll put it I. And some of these are already predefined formulas. So maybe in this particular case, I just wanted to bring the comments in. It just adds a column. And then you can start typing in your, your comments. So needs review. And those comments are now stored inside the database for when you save this report back. Okay? And then you can email this report, print it, or even save it as a snapshot as part of your further documentation. Now, I know we're fastly approaching uh, the time set here for the completion of our demonstration, so I want, definitely wanted to spend uh, some time for uh, questions and answers by the audience. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to hand it back over to John at this point in time. Great. Thank you very much. I'll go ahead and take that back. We'll pop it back onto uh, uh, my desktop, and uh, we got through the demo. Thank you so much. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get into Q&A. We do have a number of questions, and as I mentioned before, um, please feel free to ask questions at any time here, and we'll do our best to get to them. First question up, Mike. Um, which data sources does host analytics use for FX rates when it comes to um, automatically pulling in uh, rates? Uh, do users have a choice in, uh, in the oh. data sources? Uh, excellent question. Uh, so from a standpoint of extracting uh, exchange rates, like I said in my prior life, I used to have to search down the different websites that stored a lot of this information and manually update it or load it up into maybe my enterprise system. But within host, we can automatically extract that information right from the Morningstar website. Uh, so this saves you a lot of time and uh, the prevention of manual manipulation, or uh, I like to call it fat fingers. Sometimes those numbers are keyed in accidentally wrong. Uh, but we have the ability to pull it through our decision hub directly from Morningstar. Great, thanks. Can you talk a little bit about integration with ERP and other um, systems of record? So how do those connections get made, and are they pers persistent or batch, and uh, you know, are standards-based, uh, et cetera? Sure. No, no, we, we get this question a lot. And, uh, like, and I'll revert back to my, my history as is when I used to do consolidations, budget, and forecasting. The important part is to understand where all the data resides. And in today's world, a lot of it resides in multiple systems, uh, multiple general ledgers, uh, multiple, multiple sub-ledgers. So within host, regardless of where the data resides, we can connect to it, uh, whether it's using our automatic connectors, you know, data integrations with a lot of the um, cloud-based solutions that are already out there. So something like NetSuite, we already have these automatic connectors where you can run these on schedules. Uh, so just reduces the amount of manual intervention uh, that, is, that is needed, uh, but it makes the information uh, much more reliable, uh, but you can extract it as many times on a time schedule basis as needed. Okay. Great. Thank you. And if people, if there isn't a, a connector in place, um, so folks can reach out for third-party providers who might have other connectors, or they do custom connections? Yes, we absolutely do that as well. Again, it's always a case-by-case -case basis. There will always be some uh, ledgers that we have yet to come across. Uh, so we have a little over 300 customers. We've come across, I think, 70 different ledger packages that are out there today. Uh, sometimes you've heard of ones that uh, ju they're just so old that uh, you know companies just have refused to move off of them. Uh, but mm -hmm. we will. Uh, do our best to connect to those data. But most of those legacy systems do give the, provide you the ability uh, to export that information down into at least an Excel or a CVS type file uh, that we can easily extract and uh, load that file up uh, 
as an on ad needed basis. Great, thank you. Um, so when it comes to cloud uh, consolidations and reporting versus on-premise, um, is there anything that you miss by going cloud? That's a good question. Because um, I spent so many years uh, from an on-premise uh, mentality, I guess. You know, everything for me was, I dumped it all down into Excel. Excel was my friend. Um, what I've noticed when I went over to the cloud aspect of things, I rely less and less on Excel because I can do what I did in Excel all inside of host analytics with a lot more control around the whole process, meaning that if I needed to pretty up uh, an Excel worksheet, I can do that all within the cloud, with all within host analytics. I no longer had to rely on you know, multiple versions of the same template or passing it from person to person. I basically re create that one report once and have as many users within my community able to access it. And then they can do what they need to do uh, for presentation purposes. Uh, so, you know, on-premise solution, yeah, I, was, I thought there was nothing else. Cloud-based, it opens up my eyes to a whole new light and where the entire, uh, you know, I almost want to say environment or world is going. Uh, it's less and less reliant on the on-premise, more reliant on the uh, cloud solution to have somebody else do it in the background. So you don't need all that heavy equipment anymore, any of that hardware, software implementation, or the uh, security patches that you had to worry about and go to each and every one's desk to do it. In the cloud, it's one-stop shopping, 24-7. You can literally work from your house at any given point. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the next question, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll toss it out there, and then we can discuss, um, and the, the person asked, am I correct in viewing this solution as a bundling of different software solutions um, in one? Um, and for example, NetSuite is uh, an accounting framework um, which collects a lot of different capabilities. Um, so my take on OS Analytics is that it's not a bundling of different software, it's a bundling of different capabilities within one platform um, that enables you to do closing consolidation and budgeting and planning all within one platform and then it integrates with the other platforms um, as you need data, like you would pull actuals from an ERP system, etc. Um, is that accurate or care to comment? That is exactly what it is. Uh, so in most of some of the organizations I work in most of the organizations that I had worked for, uh, we had multiple general ledger systems all over the world. Okay, But I still needed one place to store all that information so I could do my consolidations, my budgets, my forecasts, and the reporting in order to disclose that information on a timely, as-needed basis. And if you were publicly traded, there was a window of opportunity that you needed to get your job done. Uh, you know, with the SEC, you had to file within so many days, depending on the size of your company. So I needed a process that I could run it more efficient. So yes, within host, it's a fully integrated solution that gives you the ability to connect multiple data sources. So regardless of where you store your information, host becomes the platform to do the consolidations, do the budgets and your forecasting, and then eventually, ultimately, do any type of reporting required on that information, all in one database. And that's the key. Great, thank you. That was helpful. Um, our next question: Our financial, uh, pardon me, financial close requires non-accounting information to be collected and reported on. Um, does the host system uh, allow or enable that? Yes. Actually, this is my favorite question because uh, when I started with hosts, uh, this was a question because this is something that I used to have to do on a quarterly basis or even monthly, depending on what I was trying to track. So yes, a lot of that sub-ledger sub information is in disparate systems. Sometimes it's, um, it's information that somebody would have to go to the shop floor just to get that type of statistical or operational information. So with a host, you have the ability to have multiple individuals now collaborate as opposed to sending one Excel spreadsheet out to 20 different individuals to capture all that type of information and we'd store it on a shared service, and they'd go in, but you could only have one user in that file at any given time. But within host, you can create a template or a device to track or capture any of that information. All within host, based on their security and their rights, 
they'd simply go into the template and you could have all 20 at the same time because they only have security or access to their piece of the pie. They'd literally go in, enter the information, save it, it's saved directly to the database, and then you can compare that total information, depending what schedule they're trying to fill out, to maybe some of the financial information. And then you could put you know, uh, some logic associated within that template to verify that the number that they've input from a total standpoint ticks and ties to what your financial results are. So yes, the, the easy answer is easily track all that information and capture it regardless of what system it's coming from uh, for that non-financial or supporting documentation that you need to have uh, access to inside or as part of your consolidations for your Ks and your Qs. All of that can be tracked, housed, and accumulated inside. Now, what about things like uh, headcount from an HR system, and, uh, you know, things like uh, like that, which are, uh, you know, could be, I presume that could be automated, sucked out of that system, and, and pulled into your uh, reporting? Yeah. Absolutely. So a lot of the customers that we have, they use, uh, you know, co companies like ADP. Uh, so we have connectors that we can literally just capture that information, connect right to the ADP system, and incorporate that inside of host. So within host, there's a workforce planning module where you can track all of the employee headcounts down to uh, the absolute detail, uh, granular level of what you need to capture uh, without the, uh, the, prom uh, the intervention of manual hands. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can, connect, we can connect to HR planning information, uh, Salesforce information, uh, regardless uh, even marketing type information, uh, I know there's marketing systems that's out there as well, we'll track it all, we can capture it all. It's, it's one place to house all that same type of information, whether it's financial or non-financial, in one place and then have the ability to report on it, uh, either in a time dimensional, time dimensional structure or maybe uh, scenarios, whether it's budget, forecast, actual, or you know, five-year historical trends. You can easily house it in one place. Great. Um, does the system support custom workflows and the ability to sort of create checklists? So, you know, it goes to Jane Doe over here for initial consolidation and then John Doe over there for XYZ and, and basically create those workflows? Yes. So within uh, host analytics, uh, this is one of the, the features that I truly do like versus the manual way that I used to have to do it in my uh, old job is that standard functionality within host. So, when one individual is complete with their task or wherever they sit in terms of that, we'll call it a workflow tree-like structure. Uh, so one person's responsible for input. They would then go ahead, input it, verify that the information is correct or they're happy with it. They would save it, and then they would forward it on to the next stage in the process. So within some of those actions that you saw in the consolidations uh, module or application off to the right, those are the different actions. So one would process it. They would save it, then they would forward it on to the next stage or hand in the process for approval, and then the further and further up the food chain. But the system would track it and keep all of that audit trail capability uh, all inside of the system, where you could then eventually just run a report, uh, either for your own documentation or even for the auditor's uh, aspects as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, we spend a lot of time, next question, we spend a lot of time tying out intercompany balances between subsidiaries. Uh, can the platform help streamline this process? Oh, absolutely. Um, so one of the features that I showed you as far as the elimination process is the ability to tick and tie it, but at the same time to put thresh variance thresholds around the process as well. So we all know that, you know, anything that's not material in some organizations, so $1,000 in some organizations is immaterial. Uh, but that's where the intercompany elimination uh, reporting process, or at least module within host, comes into play and automates the process, but at the same time streamlines it, meaning that, you know, there's notifications sent out saying that, you know, these two balances don't agree which one is, you know, it, it's usually like the two is the correct one and the from is, well, you guys booked something wrong, so somebody has to go ahead back and fix it. But the system has the intelligence already built in where it can communicate what those differences are. Okay, great. Um, how much do you need to uh, prepare your chart of accounts um, for you know, proper consolidation uh, within a system like this? That's a good question. Uh, it, it seems to vary by organization. Uh, some 
organization's chart of accounts are pretty straightforward. So if you have one single general ledger and multiple business units running off of that, uh, the setup or implementation slash integration of that is pretty straightforward because we can pull a lot of that uh, metadata and build your hierarchies based on the structures that have already been established inside of your uh, ERP system. Uh, where it becomes a little bit more um, not as straightforward is when you have multiple ledgers and you're looking to create a single chart of accounts. So that's where we would have uh, one of our solutions architect in the initial design phase of this sit down with you to understand what do you want your chart of accounts or what do you want your hierarchies to look like. Uh, it's, you know, that's the nuts and bolts of any, um, when, when you're building any application, to make sure that what you have at the base when you're trying to build anything, uh, the base is the foundation uh, for a solid, uh, efficient uh, application. But it's not, it's not a hard process. It just really varies from company to company, I would say. But we try and make that process very streamlined. Um, is there any limit to the uh, number of financial systems that you can be consolidating from? Um, so do, your, you know, do all the GLs have to be coming out of you know, a single platform like an NetSuite, an Oracle, an SAP? Or could you have 20 different systems, um, and as long as they're massaged to be sending the data, um, host can handle any number, essentially? Host can handle as many uh, disparate systems as possible. It does not have to come from one single source. So, uh, like I said, I've, I've worked for many different companies that had, we acquired companies via acquisitions. So each one had as something as simple as maybe a QuickBooks or a Peachtree, and others were a little bit more sophisticated where they had an Oracle general ledger. Mm -hmm. They run the gamut. So okay. we can expect it from any type of system that's out there. It does not have to be on a single platform. Okay. Great. Um, I think at that point, in order to make sure we uh, get out of here on time, uh, I think we'll call that the final question. Um, we do have a few other items and then the survey at the, coming at the very end. So let's go ahead and move on uh, to that. So here's our obligatory reminder. Um, please do stay on. We'll, we'll be done here in just a minute, and we'd appreciate you staying on for one more minute to take a short survey. If you'd like to be connected uh, with uh, either today's speaker, Mike Lease, or with Host Analytics, um, to uh, follow up, ask more questions, et cetera. Uh, we'd be happy to help you do that. And that's just a click of a mouse in the short survey. Uh, of course, please join us at Performative to continue the conversation. Um, we'd, uh, we have a, a lot of great, you know, highly qualified peers, essentially, who are out there uh, talking to one another about topics just like this. A uh, quick note about an upcoming conference, Performatech, which is on March 20th at the SFO um, uh, San Francisco Hyatt. Um, and that's going to be a wonderful place to look at systems. Uh, and specifically, Host Analytics will be there if you want to get hands on. Uh, that's a great opportunity to do that. Uh, it's free conference for finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. Uh, finally, of course, a great thanks to Host Analytics and to Mike Lease. Mike, um, your background uh, in finance and accounting is incredibly helpful, and uh, great job today uh, giving us all of that wonderful information. So thanks so much for joining us this morning, or this afternoon, for you on the East Coast. And with that, um, I would like to go ahead and uh, I'll close down the webinar at this point. Um, as I mentioned before, you'll be sent straight into the post-event survey. Thanks so much, folks, for joining us today. We hope to see you again at another performative uh, event or online at performative.com. Take care.